No, skepticism is awesome. It's, there you like go. A, <laughs> it's a superpower. It's like you can see the matrix code. We usually don't start the show by just shouting its frame rate. We usually start with a. Uh, we usually started with me shouting its frame rate. A, well, yes, but I joined you against your will. Yeah. So eat that. <laughs> uh, no, we usually start off with a popular uh, video making 39. the rounds, <laughs> a viral video. And so uh, we're going to give you this tasty treat currently up on Funny or Die that makes me very happy. This is Captain Planet. They're going to destroy the forest. We have to do something. Let our powers combine. Earth, fire. <laughs> Hard. With your powers combined, I am Captain Planet. Go Planet! Well, Planeteers, what seems to be the problem? They're cutting down the trees. Then I guess we'll have to plant some more. Captain. <laughs> Let's spruce this place up a bit, huh? Okay. <laughs> I can't let you do that, Captain. Anybody else want to go green? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Punk asses. You're going back up. Don't summon me again unless you're ready for that pain. Peace, dick holes. <laughs> Power is my bitches. bitches. <laughs> hey, all you that's enough of that. That's this is when we always play the intro for it. Now, now you gotta say it's frame rate. It's frame rate. Hey! <laughs> we'll fix it in post. Welcome to Frame Rate, episode forty. I'm Tom Merritt. I'm Brian Brushwood. We are joined by Mr. Justin Robert Young of the Weird Things Podcast. Woo! Hello, and. Hi. The intelligent Ms. Veronica Belmont. <laughs> Huzzah! Well played. Uh, and we are, if you haven't figured it out, live from Dragon Con. Yeah. That's your. Yep. That's, That's you guys. <laughs> what percentage of the chat room is in the audience, do you think? <laughs> Somebody back up for a giggle and starts I, clapping. They're, they're I was told there would be themselves. no math. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is going to be a this is a special episode of Frame Rate. In fact, we're going to have another episode uh, on Tuesday. Uh, Brian, I think you're going to be in. Yeah, person, I'll be live right? in the studio over there at uh, the Twitch Studios, and uh, but so this is sort of this is sort of a bonus, which means we can go a little bit off track. Normally, we stick to uh, the big story, but we thought it'd be fun this week to let you guys decide. What is the big story? We got two contenders, right, Tom? Yes, that is correct, Brian. Uh, here are your two your two choices. <laughs> you know, newscasters don't traditionally mock each other while they're in the middle of a podcast. <laughs> That's why we're not take it away, weatherman. <laughs> oh, I'll take it away. <laughs> <laughs> That's correct, Brian. Uh, Netflix and stars broke. I don't know if you guys heard this, but they broke up. Oh, uh, so oh, yeah, we're all gonna go to Six Flags together. I know it's one of those. Oh, it's awesome. one of those weird things where you're like, God, am I gonna hang out with stars now or Netflix? I don't know. Uh, so we could talk Netflix. about that, or um, this is we are at the skeptic track, uh, and so we could talk about science and technology and how it's represented in film and what we like and when it's okay to depart from reality and all that stuff. So unless you want to throw a potpourri, like who's got an idea? Yeah, yeah. So uh, those are your yeah, three, I think so. it's three hard, choices. Isn't it? So the, of the two idea. choices, those are your three. Exactly. Uh, yeah. 
You have two choices and infinity. Literally, just throw something up. We'll uh, talk about it. So let's hear it. Let's we'll just go by applause. All right. Yes. All right. If you guys want us to hash out the uh, the miserable emotional train wreck between Netflix and Stars, make some noise. Well, okay. I think it's clear we have a winner. Uh, if you if you would like to hear us discuss uh, how they get science and technology so miserably wrong in films and when they get it amazingly right, clap your hands. And, and so, if you would like to talk about any other topic, <laughs> literally, there is no limit. Clap. I think some of them are clapping twice. Let's start narrowing yeah. it down. <laughs> I think I think number the two. The Weimar one. Republic. Anybody? <laughs> I think number two won. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely did. Um, yes, so uh, let's talk about where, where do you want to start? You want to start in science fiction or, um, you know, in, I don't know. Like well, I, I know what my biggest bugaboo is, and I want to see what <laughs> is. <laughs> <Bugaboo. No. laughs> it's when people Golly say gee. that stupid word. Uh, my, my biggest uh, problem is when. <laughs> That's a humdinger talk. <laughs> it's when the kids skip the light fantastic. Uh, <laughs> I, I, That's pajamas. <laughs> bees knees. I hate it when you laugh at me, Brian. <laughs> no, I hate it uh, when when they show the giant computer text when they're hacking. You know, the big wow. the big giant text that says virus downloading or yeah. you know There's something. There's actually sort a web app now that you can do that on. You can bring up the full screen and then just type in anything and it makes it look like fake, like, like oh, hacking. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. I know why they do it because they're making it look readable on the movie screen. But yeah. I, it just annoys me. And so whenever I see a movie, which um, the worst fish, offender is probably Jurassic Park. Oh yeah, I think is the most <laughs> the, famous. You mean the, the, the awesome Linux famous. system, yeah. the Unix system. Yeah. <laughs> hackers, yeah, yeah. and that's especially bad because the movie's called Hackers. Yeah. The net. Yeah. No, oh sword, swordfish is also the swordfish. Actually, uh, had some actual coding scenes in it, though. Yeah, but they also had that montage where they were like trying to. Really make uh, what's his face look awesome, so they just had him like sweating, typing on a computer, and like this awesome. Well, rock that, that's montage. pretty okay. Pretty well, I'll give props to War Games for yes. actually showing real screens throughout the. Nobody yeah. clap for War Games. Screw you all. <laughs> no, uh, let's uh, try this again. That's getting that's getting a remake, right? No, no. Yeah, I, I heard it was. No, yeah, it, it was like last week. Well, I, there, I am sorry was... to bring news here. Uh, you know, <laughs> no, no. Uh, specifically, like, like what we had heard was there was rumors about there being a War Games 2000 based around the Y2K bug, and that did obviously did not come to pass. Um, Still time either. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> that's true. Uh, but uh, but uh, let me say this thing. First of all, the whole idea. Anytime in movies you see anybody doing anything with a keyboard, who who types unless you're writing an email for anything at all. It's like you do everything by clicking that mice. Yeah, and it's but like, that doesn't look good on on. Well, and, uh, you okay. know what? No, uh, I, 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 I... <laughs> <laughs> and now they have to stay like this until somebody <laughs> slaughters a goose. <laughs> you go, you go. Okay, so let me say this though. So I mean, there's no end to the little things that drive me nuts. But once you understand and you nailed it, it's like visually, it's not entertaining to watch somebody like. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on. No, there's... you could use Control C. Yeah, no, I, I, I got, I, hold on. No, right, no it's, it's up to the left. No. Tom. Yeah, that's, that, that's not entertaining. Right, exactly. So yeah. once you get past that, it's just, it's just a movie convention. It's just like a, like a car chase or any other thing. It's like, it's like, I am so totally not bothered by any of that anymore. Like I, I used to be nuts about it. Now I don't care at all. In defense of the uh, keyboard typing though, Folks who do a lot of coding do a lot of typing and use keyboard shortcuts instead of the mouse. It's kind of a, it's, you know, it's a... Yeah, but you know who really thing. uses keyboards are like... Uh... Cats. <laughs> <laughs> Especially keyboard cats. <laughs> uh, no, usually it's like when you go to the airlines and then they're trying to see how they can get you a seat on the flight. Oh, and they won't even look at you? Yeah, yeah. And, well, like... and, and they're always... Um, uh, and of course, the reason is is because they're using like Windows 98 to emulate a Telnet session to something that was written in the mid-70s. And so they're always like, like half of it is just one button that they're just hitting through to get through everything. <laughs> Hold on. Tap, 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 tap. Atlanta, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, did they show it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be funny if like, you were typing something really <laughs> awful. Like it was just one really elongated racial slur. And then reveal you to the, the fiend you really are. 
when you absentmindedly type. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so what, what, what other gripes are there? I mean, obviously, anytime, you know, because, and I think there, that has changed over the years, too. As more people have come to use personal computers, they, they're familiar directly with the process of, of computing, and then they notice those things. Uh, I think I think 20 years ago, you could get away with something like the net or hackers or whatever, because most people are like, oh, mm -hmm. those crazy kids with the jazz music and the internet. Oh, you know what drives me nuts? When people make a phone call on a TV show or movie, and it says in giant letters, calling dot, 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 and it's like a different operating system See, than again, actually ever exists in real life. I don't I don't mind that again. That's again, it's it's yeah. it's a convention that that is, you know, let's let's just say whenever that happens, I'm like, this is an alternate reality where this idiotic OS works. Okay, how many people in the audience are like Brian? They're like, yeah, I know it's wrong, but it doesn't bother me. That's a fair number. You guys uh, are not real nerds. How many, yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> not real nerds. How many I'm people sorry. are driven to absolute madness and want to rip someone's throat out in the movie theater? <laughs> Thank Dude, you. This is 50-50. Yeah, wow. Is. I'm, I'm surprised it's split. I'll tell you what, there was, I, I'm, I'm not usually a guy who gets uh, too picky about it, but there was one episode, for some reason it stuck with me, there's an episode of Chuck, where before oh. the iPhone got MMS messaging, he sent a picture, like his <laughs> best friend sent him a picture or something. And at first I'm like, oh my God, we can do that now? <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized that it was just a TV show and I'm like, I'm never watching Chuck again. <laughs> well, now what about the Dr. Horrible where he uses an obvious iPhone type device to blow up the car? That, that's not real. There's an app for that. <laughs> I'd stand correct. Actually, there, yeah, there obviously no, why there wouldn't be. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, yeah. now, we should also talk about situations where they got it right. Uh, I don't know if you guys read the story, but um, right around the time that Lost was winding things up, and there had some interesting things happen, uh, because, you know, Lost started in 2004, uh, and allegedly all took place up until that point in 2004, but then they had somebody come in from uh, from a few years uh, in the future in, in the show, and so they did a lot of research about what the speculation around the iPhone was, and they very intentionally gave her a global communication device that, yeah. that nailed yeah. the, uh, the iPhone-like interface. And I remember watching it at the time, thinking that, well, that's, you know, kind of, that's obviously just an iPhone that they were going for. But, but as it was, <laughs> not only was it prescient for what the iPhone was going to become, but it was prescient for what all of smartphones yeah. was going to become in the future. Because everyone was, imitated an iPhone. Exactly. Everyone. No, yeah. I mean, that's a case where they absolutely got it right. That's why Samsung's and, in court. And the iPhone was created by Jacob in a <laughs> wellspring of golden water. Yeah. My iPhone is usually delivered in a big crate. That's <laughs> no, dropped, it's just dropped air, from air a helicopter. Drop. Yeah, yeah. Well, another show that gets it really right is Futurama. I mean, they have a bunch of like floating signed, heads like, in jars. Yes, well, that is exactly right. You don't know that. That's, yeah. But like, Still they have a lot of like so are really like into math and science, and like they actually made a whole like uh, a formula or a theorem or a um, whatever you call those math things, <laughs> and it actually. <laughs> Oh, by the way, you're the same person who screamed you're not real, real nerds. <laughs> and math is hard. And um, it was it's actually a real, like, it, it actually works. And it was very cool. Yeah, they, they didn't just skip and put up a bunch no. of gobbledygook, which they could have. Yeah. And most people would never know. They actually spent yeah. the time uh, and made it real. Most recently, in, uh, and you knew that they had to do this, or at least give a nod to it being right, given how many geeks were going to love this movie. But it was neat to watch the opening scenes of uh, Tron Legacy. Um before it became a movie about sitting around a table drinking glowing wine. Uh, but, uh, but you know, w w he's actually typing, you know, real programming commands uh, in the, uh, or whatever made up OS that he's working in. Yeah. What? Where, where, where he's, you know, uh, X gaming, you know, his way through the. Uh... Yes, he did. <laughs> is, is it bother, does it bother you in movies uh, when there is something unexplained, something paranormal? something ghosty or whatever, that they don't give some sort of plausible, rational explanation of why it could have been. Do you, need, do you need to have that That sort of like, well, it was probably just a quantum blah, 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 blah. Is it okay to just leave that open? Is that ever bother you? I get, I get annoyed by when they use, when they use sloppy shorthand to, to just say, oh, it's a haunting or whatever. Like, I'd rather at some point they use an alternate phrase that has more scientific merit behind it, like, oh, it's a quantum entanglement. That's why we can hear the echoes of their consciousness, you know, instead of just saying, you know, a haunting or whatever. Uh, specifically, I'll tell you where it gets right is, for example, in Star Trek The Next Generation, it's like, yes, if you go from zero to warp anything, you're going to be jelly on the back of the Enterprise. And so uh, to allay that distraction, they say, you know, engage the inertial dampeners. 
And it's like, yes, you know, there is no such thing, but right. at least you are acknowledging mm. me as an intelligent viewer that that's something I could be thinking about. I but had that problem recently, actually. I, I don't want to be too spoilery, but is it okay if I spoil Cowboys versus Aliens? I didn't see it, but go ahead. So it's, that movie, any, I thought Does anyone was, not want to be spoiled so, on Cowboys versus Aliens? It's yeah. not a big uh, deal. Raise I'll be, your hand. I'll be vague. Get out. Those two yeah, people. All right. All right. I'll, I'll be vague -ish, Be vague for Riley. So it's, okay. a, it's an alien movie, right? And I was, having, I was having fun watching it. It was, you know, I took it for what it was. It was entertaining. And I was like, okay, aliens, I get that. That's fine. But then when there was a scene with Olivia Wilde's character, you know, with the... With the, the, <laughs> the scene. Um, when they were Suddenly with want the, to see the movie now. American... Spoiler yeah. alert, yellow. With the Native Americans, and all of a sudden I was like, that is just, that next step, I just can't, you know, even though we've already established aliens and spaceships <laughs> and whatever, her her particular scene, I was just like, Pretty sure whatever's what? in my mind is better no. than the movie now. You didn't see it? <laughs> no. She does get naked. Yeah. So there's that. That's not real. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Uh, What's the uh, explanation for her getting that? There is just that she is in. Well, oh, New York. You said naked. I thought you meant the other thing. Space magic, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I'll tell you. In, in in defense of uh, leaving stuff vague and not using that, I think techno babble can be a real writer's crutch. And I think that in crappier Star Trek series and episodes, that's a major problem. Is that it just becomes the way that you can write yourself out of plot holes. And even like you know, like Doctor Who has you know major problems where they really throw their head over the wall and then at the end they just have their turn like into like you know if everybody claps three times and thinks of the doctor then the universe comes back <laughs> um, yeah I, I thank you senator paul simon uh, <laughs> you've been waiting on that one haven't you that joke has been marinating for like eight hours <laughs> uh i i am not bothered if it seems like I can, even if I have to do it myself, if I seems like from the information they've given me in the show that I could construct a plausible reason, uh, it, it doesn't even have to be made explicit because I think you're right. Techno babble could be a big crutch. Yes, uh, but but I I think it if uh, if they leave it to where it's like that just I can't possibly come up with a way that could have happened that will nag at me that'll bug well i think i think what you're looking for is internal consistency you want to see a framework and rules that it sticks to and um i and that that goes for on two aspects number one you have uh if you are going to be scientific or, or technological in any way you got to be consistent and, and correct but also you can avoid it all when it comes to tone and i point this out all the time uh it drove me nuts you want to, and this is everyone on the i am the one person in the whole universe who apparently like Batman Begins more than The Dark Knight, uh, and so when when I'm watching The Dark Knight, I'm looking at Two Face, and uh, you, you just looked away in shame. You're just upset at me. Uh, by, by the way, there was one guy who very briefly raised his hand and then immediately reconsidered. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, oh God, I like Batman Begins better than Dark Knight. He's like, me. <laughs> so, uh, but but meanwhile, I'm looking at uh, at Two Face uh, with his you know with his you know pulled apart skull side and his regular lips and the whole time he's talking i'm thinking you can't make that syllable with your lips that's not <laughs> and it's like i'm asking myself why am i even saying this this is a comic book movie i shouldn't i shouldn't be bothered by this and at some point i was then i thought i was like well is that my well, fault am i being a jerk no, i think but, i think it, but then the, fl the well the, the flip side is men in black I never would have thought of anything like that. They set up a tone where where I was caught up in the silliness, and there's there's ludicrous crap in, in Men in Black, and I didn't care for one second. I was too busy having a good time. So so to me, I put it on the director that there's something in your tone that's causing me to expect seriousness, and I notice inconsistencies if you're going to play that game. Yeah, Watch I your mean, tone, there's always, Mister. There's always that suspension of disbelief thing, right? Like if if they set you up for that and you're you're on that groove, you're okay. But the second they do throw a wrench in in that system of belief that you've developed within the storyline, then you're like, what? No, that's not right. Well, especially, and I think it especially hurt me with uh, that series because to me, what was great about all Batman Begins was that it was the best magic trick I'd ever seen in a movie. It spent the whole movie not for one second acting like a comic book movie until the very end scene was so obviously idiotically comic book in its logic about, you know, microwaves to release a gas to make everyone crazy in a town. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, this is a comic book movie. Whereas from the beginning, Dark Knight was very much a comic book movie. And that's what disappointed me. Because I wanted to do that same magic trick again. You are, and actually, this is, I think, kind of a point where we go separately is that when Batman Begins, I first thought it was a comic book movie when there was Batman in it. <laughs> <laughs> But that's just it. But that's just it. Batman Begins 
did a really good job of, of having it be Batman, but because it's the origin story, he doesn't really become the Batman until, you know, two thirds of the way into it. And even then there's a logical consistency for why they create this. So he's like, well, we're going to use psychological warfare as well, well, which is why we're going to do this, this, what might be considered over the top. I mean, so, so you're saying that uh, the part where the orphan billionaire is learning how to fight from ninjas, um, <laughs> they were like, well, this completely works. <laughs> Face. <laughs> I'm 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 with Brian on this one. <laughs> Are you really? I'm with ninjas on this one. I feel like somebody has to. Be. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm all alone. All right, uh, alone. you know we're gonna get to a major feedback section in a little bit, but anybody got any other of this kind of topic? Yeah, specific. Uh, to, to we, uh, uh, there's ready? a microphone right here. Uh, don't be shy. Run yeah, straight run, up to the run, microphone. Run, run, Push go pancakes, go. Uh, get get right up there in front. And uh, what we'd like to hear is specific instances like this. And we'll we'll have an entire section. Keep, keep it like super short. Just mention specific movies for us now, and then we'll have a big feedback section coming up later on. What do you got, Ray? Uh, not, not a specific movie, but <laughs> keep up. This may seem to be minor details to some people, and my thought it was. But keep in mind. It was, it's within the memory of a lot of us in here, including me, when Indians all spoke the same language, and when they were saying it in a cowboy movie, they were making fun of the director and the other white guys. Oh, wow. And, you know, it's all much more realistic today. That, that is awesome, and in every way, not what we want. Uh, <laughs> but, I, I mean, I love you, Ray. You know I love you. Yes. Uh, all right, what do you got? Um, uh about internal consistency in science fiction movies, uh, space dogfights as World War II type physics, right, as opposed right. to oh, no, actual space flight. We've got to have a judge's ruling. Is that is that okay as a convention? Space dogfights, that... Justin Robert Young. Yes. Veronica Belmont. Yeah. Yeah, Ver no, totally. As is explosions and sounds, all of that. I'm okay with it now. No, it's... I'm with Derek. No, they're not okay. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> What do you mean you made the real thing and it he was actually better? Flew he actually space flew ships. spaceships and fought them and shot them. But you, He's really? got his stripes, Belmont. Wow. <laughs> Next I, one. I just got over hey, Granted, we're, we're getting there now, but uh, when uh, TV shows use biometrics or uh, like fingerprint systems and stuff like that, and it's like they think that instantly anything is scanned and all of a sudden, boom, a database of the entire population yeah, comes yeah, up yeah. and like, hey, we got the guy. And It's an interesting point. Like, that in 1960, totally fine. Because so far in the future, so unthinkable that we let it go. It's like, okay, that's just far fiction science fiction. But as we get closer to certain technologies, yeah, now I can take my, they my start phone to become out with Google less goggles believable. and take a picture of something and I'm like, holy shit, I can yeah. bring up that picture. Well, <clears throat> language, <laughs> mister. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here, here's the other thing. There's a lot of things like that that annoyed me five years ago, but now we are there. And I'm like, man, I'm glad that they led the actual technology in this story because now five years later, it's exactly how it really is. Yeah, but as you get closer, you want them to be more accurate. And, and I think mm -hmm. what you're saying is yes. they when they deviate and you know how it's supposed to work because it actually is working, right. it, it sticks out. More. Yeah, yeah no, like I, I have friends in, in, in the um, police department and stuff like that, you know, and they have to literally go through and mark, you know, where points are on like fingerprints and stuff like that. Right. And yet it's automatically assumed that that kind of stuff is just instant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, it's Brad. Hey. Hey, Brad. <laughs> uh, just basically the thing that bothers me most is when I watch a show or a movie where we've got advanced technology, they're way ahead of us, but they still can't aim a gun and hit their mark. <laughs> <laughs> the stormtrooper problem. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> all right, all right, we need a judge's <laughs> ruling on stormtroopers. Stormtrooper problem? Uh, big drinkers. Big drinkers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a problem. Uh, no, no, not a problem. It's totally okay. Problem, but actually, don't really. Problem. Yeah. <laughs> next question. Our next comment. Um, the thing that drives me insane is when they can take any still photograph or any piece of horrible, crappy video footage and enhance, enhance right? Enhance. And see every minor little detail. The enhance issue, Veronica Belmont. <laughs> oh, big problem. Brian Brushwood. Enhance. <laughs> uh, yes, I enhance. Yes. <laughs> Had no idea Justin enhanced. No, that bothers you too. Next. Uh, this goes back to what you were talking about, the coding and everything. In the beginning of the movie Antitrust, they're supposed to be coding an operating system and everything. And after I took a class in HTML and I'm watching the movie, and I was like, that's not coding. That's HTML web work. That's markup. 
Yeah, so, I'm, I, I am with you. Veronica Belmont? It's pretty deep. It's a deep cut, but yeah. Uh, you know what? I'm going to say that 99.9% .9 of people wouldn't even catch that. Yeah, so that's I'm what I mean, okay. deep cut. Uh, I think it's horrific unless it was a MySpace layout. Yeah. <laughs> well played. Blink tag. Next, next, next comment. Computers are great. Yeah. No. You should no. try. No, no, no. You Get should out try. Out okay. You should Down try medicine. Are great. I are love great. watching shows and seeing where they've screwed up. You see the guy being resuscitated and the mask is upside down. Or they're not even attached to the equipment. And it's amazing. The equipment has saved their lives because it's in the room. It's a uh, I'll tell you what, if I, I don't want to go that road if for no other reason. How many guys have seen that scene from Firefly where they pan back and Wash is holding nothing at all at the controls? Have you guys seen that? Yeah. Like they just framed it and it's like, and, but the scene worked and so it didn't matter. So I don't want to get, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole because then Joss Whedon will be upset with me. <laughs> Tensor guy. Hey, there's one movie that requires like a special mention. Armageddon. <laughs> Do you know, well... And yeah. to uh, you know, I know the fairness doctrine is retired, but we do have to say uh, it, we do have to say deep impact. Oh, dude! Well, Every time yeah, we say yeah. that's okay. that's the reason uh, Armageddon is so hilariously bad is because at that same summer you had a very well thought, very uh, scientifically accurate alternative to it as well. Uh, that's it. Yeah, I think well, the, the the bad science was the least of Armageddon's problems. Yeah, <laughs> but there is one particular scene where the space station is rotating this way, crackers. and everybody's walking up and down, <laughs> and they go to the center, and there's a, a you know ladder, and they go up and down the axis of rotation. Which yeah, it was bigger yes. on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Woo. Um, I always hate uh, space races that travel to Earth or whatever for water. Like they they can travel across the universe, but they can't figure out how to put two hydrogen. Oh, that's and oxygen a really together. good one. You know, it's like please, there's like hydrogen everywhere, stars. No. You know, and that's planets. a that's a big problem in sci-fi in general. You're I talking guess. about yeah. ice pirates, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I, Deep Space Nine. There's all kinds of the V. You know, yeah. it was just like yeah. uh, water. Really, any yeah. of the other planets in the solar system. You know. Yeah, so. it's hard to suspend disbelief on that kind of stuff, to use that phrase again, when a, a civilization is so advanced that they have mastered, like, you know, like uh, intergalaxy or outer galaxy travel, yet they can't do a simple thing. You know, yeah, like, well, they're, I mean, they're here for the gold. Say, yeah. in, general, in general, with all these things, is that we keep coming back to examples of TV shows and movies that blow. Like, they're terrible. They're not good. They're, the pacing is awful. The plot is bad. The dialogue sucks. You're, you're saying and, there, there may be an underlying problem. Well, that, 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 like, like if, if it's not an enjoyable experience, then people who know better look at it and be like, well, and also, the you know, the web H is HTML, and it's not like yeah, a yeah. Unix terminal. Uh, if it was a great a fantastic story about aliens coming to Earth for water that was really, really well written, you might forget it. then we'd be like, oh, yeah, no, it's water aliens. It's fine. All right. Yeah. Last no, one. The, uh, the, wild, the Earth Wild West is the only place to find gold in the whole universe. Yeah. Um, but no, like ridiculous Wait, invasions. Did you just drop a big old spoiler on my face? <laughs> Two people in the back. Earmuffs. Or, or water. Yeah. Um, um, ridiculous invasions, but movies that sold me on it. Um, Independence Day. I love that movie, even though it's like, why does he have to put a thing on the roof to track her to no, call her on the no, cell phone? No, no, stop talking. <laughs> He took Mac OS and I can't get two computers in my own house to network, and they're both on the same goddamn OS. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it had huge, huge holes, but I like the you know why does the virus make a Jolly Roger appear on the alien ship? I don't know, but because was... Wolsek was involved. that's right. <laughs> yeah, that would have been okay. the first victim of the lulls boat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we we got to take a quick break uh, before we finish up here. And, Do we have a sponsor? Uh, thank our sponsor. Yeah, everyone who has a smartphone, please pull it out. Everyone, hands yeah. up. Yank um, them out, kids. Go to squarespace.com, sign up, and create a website right now. Dude, you could do that. You think I'm joking. You're putting your things away. But you could do that and start a campaign for better movies. For example. For your particular issue. You can sign up right now. You don't need a credit card or nothing. You can suddenly be online instantly. All you got to do is give a website, and for two weeks, you get it totally free. You could make Justin Robert Young totally faced Brian on his own podcast, dot .squarespace.com. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it'll be up, uh, distributed network hosting, so that You could it have it done down. before we're done with this show. Email it to frameratesshow at gmail.com. That's the link. It could happen. And then if you decide to keep it, use the code squarespace, or I'm sorry, framerate9. <laughs> 
Use the code FRAMERATE9 and uh, you get 10% off the first six months of service. So check it out and email us those links. All right, dude, are we ready for the real issue? Because the big film film. And in post, he'll put the thing in. You're like, how about that video, right? Yeah! Uh, okay, so here's the thing. Uh, how many guys have heard of a little movie called Star Wars? <laughs> this was an awesome trifecta because nobody knew whether to cheer, raise their hand, or feign like they'd never heard of Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know if you guys have heard, but uh, George Lucas, uh, surprise, has made changes. Did somebody just no. boo when I said George Lucas? <laughs> I think they already oh, knew the shot? story. They knew, everybody oh, knows no. the story. This yeah. is Dragon yeah. God. They, oh, like, they're oh, like, oh, we know what you're going to talk about. You bring up George Lucas, you bring up Blu-ray changes. What right, else yes. would you be talking about? No, exactly. So so if you guys haven't heard, um, uh, a few... A few no. Im no. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right, yeah. Everybody out there knows that he added a no to the Darth no, Vader no, no, scene. No, 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 uh, Tom, everybody. No! no. Uh, here's the thing. Every time I ever watch this movie before now, I never knew whether he was in support of this torture of his son. Yeah. <laughs> because he's behind a mask, right? And you need someone to explain. Like, there's no one. But no. It's kind of under no. breath. You no. can't really hear no. it. No. No. Wait. What? No. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. He sits there looking at his son, but then thankfully now George Lucas is spelling it out. Wait. How do you feel, Darth? You cool with this? No. No. Wait. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop it right there. I wonder what he thinks now, though. Yeah. So After he's like, he already he's said no once, kind of like a. Yeah, no, baby. No! Uh, how many of you, okay, all of you can do the no. We get it. How many of you can do the crate dragon that's been added? Oh my gosh. Did, all right. Is there anyone who doesn't know about the crate dragon change? Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, you guys may or may not remember, and I don't know how many times you guys watch Star Wars, but uh, there's a very. <laughs> There's a very uh, specific um, sound that, that Obi-Wan Kenobi used to scare off the Tusken Raiders. Don't call them sand people. They're touchy. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're Tusken Tatooinians. That's, that's right. Yes. And so, uh, and so it's, it's, sort of, it's this musical kind of like kind of thing. We all grew up with it for 30 years. And for some reason, they decided to replace it with what sounds like a sophomore in high school playing with garage band. <laughs> It's harder to fake, I know. <laughs> All right, now, Brian, Wait, can you... Uh, do, are you oh, my God, I know exactly, yes, do? no, okay, we're going to do this, go. All right, so... Well, uh, let me get this set up. On, on, on NSFW, uh, me and Brian went on for about 30 minutes joking about the... Woo! <laughs> like, the like, the next thing out of mouth is, hello, sailors! <laughs> um, but we came and we cracked the code, and we figured out where it was an absolute exact... We got pre-roll to go through here in just a second. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. Talk, talk, talk. <laughs> Fix this. Uh, well, tell you, here, we can go back to it. What are some of the other changes? Do you know about the, the R2-D2? They added rocks for no discernible reason whatsoever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they have, they have them hiding behind a bunch of CG rocks for no good reason at all. Um, they also added Sebulba into uh, Jabba's palace that for no good reason. That one doesn't bother me. What? That okay. one doesn't bother me. Make your case while I... You the, and Veronica. The, the reason that one doesn't bother me is Sebulba's... We, I mean... It only bothers me in so much as the first three movies bother me in their existence. But if we're going to, you know, accept them, then he's on Tatooine. We know that. He's part of the crew. He shows up at Jabba's Palace. It's not a big deal. It's actually a nice tie-in to bring those movies together. The only problem is that is the movies themselves, those first three movies. But if you if if you were, for the sake of argument, to say those first three movies in an alternate universe were good, yeah. then Sebulba showing up does make sense because it's like, oh, it's it's a nice way to have consistency across the entire series. Okay, so so here's the problem with that with that I have with that is that it's an unnecessary addition. And every time you take a character that you've already seen in the series before and throw him in another freaking scene, you're making the universe smaller. I think one of the things that we all loved about the original Star Wars universe as we experienced it is that it had this larger than you can even imagine idea to it. The idea that that as awesome as the Mos Eisley Cantina was, it was the smallest, most insignificant part of this vast mosaic of 
amazing things out there. And so uh, to me, when you do all this folding over, when all of a sudden you have a scene in the prequels where Jabba's essentially the mayor of Tatooine, you know, <laughs> launching the pod races, all of that just makes everything smaller and it takes away from the, from the whole experience. Again, I think the problem is Jabba being the mayor of Tatooine, not Sebulba showing up at Jabba's palace. Okay. Did, well, they, did they say why they made some of these changes? Like what the actual reason was for like rich. changing? Well, no, actually, what? when reach for comments, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Funsies. Funsies. Oh, they also they also <laughs> added blinking to uh, to Jabba and the Ewoks because uh, that's what you know everyone was saying after Return of the Jedi. They're like, oh, is it okay into an epic trilogy? But uh, why don't those furry bears blink? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you, know, you know, I'll tell you what, when, when uh, Lucas, and this is actually uh, true, on uh, George Lucas what, did give comment, mm -hmm. he was reached, uh, he had a very contemplative pause and then <laughs> farted into the phone. <laughs> and then hung up. Because, you know, some and then 30 years later understand. made a different fart. If he has, you know, felt that he needed, there was part of, never mind, why Adding am I trying to have to a serious Ewoks conversation? There's no problem with that. It's just, it's just that we've, he's blown everybody's trust. Okay, yeah. all right, well, real quick, yeah. we do have the- And the originals uh, aren't available. I think that's that's the biggest that's problem. That's the biggest frustration. They don't release just you there know you the, yeah. the unaltered, the unmolested versions. Uh, we actually have the uh, the actual reason for the change here, right here. here. You listen to this. Oh wait, I missed it. Wait, hold on, let me get it for you. I gotta do. I did, I gotta give it correct. You're trying to do this live. Yes. That's no, impressive. listen. Wait for it. Wait. That'll scare off the sand people. <laughs> Tuscans. Sorry. Sorry. Well, like I was trying to say, if if, if if Lucas felt like there was part of the story, like with the Darth Vader scene, that didn't. Sorry. I gotta write this one. Veronica is getting killed in this segment. Never mind, I'm done. Go ahead. Go on. Uh, well, okay, so specifically, the reason I wanted to discuss this here is, I don't know if you guys saw this story on Slash Film that came out, I believe, yesterday, but in 1998, uh, or 1988, George Lucas testified before Congress about the copyright restrictions, about uh, the copyright holder being able to make changes to other people's works, because a lot of people, filmmakers who would create these arts, uh, would, would they be in the hands of, of, you know, Turner movies who would colorize them. And uh, uh, this is, um, I suspect that, from what I heard before, Tom, you and I are not on the same page on this. But, uh, but uh, well, let's explain what the what he said. He said people, uh, where the people who alter or destroy works of art and our cultural heritage for profit or as an exercise of power are barbarians. And if the laws of the United States continue to condone this behavior, history will surely classify us as a barbaric society. He's basically saying that because they're colorizing movies where the negatives haven't been properly preserved, we don't have the originals and we only have the colorized version. Okay, uh, but he also goes on to say, the current defacements are just the beginning. Today, engineers with their computers add color to black and white movies, change the soundtrack, speed up the pace, add or subtract material material to the philosophical tastes of the copyright holder tomorrow more advanced technology will be able to replace actors with fresher faces or alter dialogue or change the movement of the actor's lips to match this is him no but he's saying in the future it'll become even easier for old negatives to become lost and be replaced by new altered negatives so his point is they can do all these things and it may we may lose totally the okay originals as long as you can still get the originals well, I'm not thinking he's saying that people can get the as, originals. No, he's I think saying he's as, long as, as long as the original negatives exist. In a vault inside okay. of his Skywalker it's basement. It's all about preservation until the copyright. When the copyright on Star Wars expires, it will revert to the public domain and we can all watch the originals again. Yeah, don't even get started on that. <laughs> Will never well, happen. Well, what, 1977, so 95 years plus the life of the author. I mean, we'll all just be 162, but <laughs> it will revert to the public domain. Thankfully, by then, we'll all be in the singularity. We'll be able to experience the Lucasfilm licensed official, you know, live action interactive version by then. Can I just say that we've made so much fun of the woo that now I'm actually excited for it to be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Derek, uh, ruling from you here. Uh, I know we're, we're, we're at five o'clock. Can we continue on or, or do we have to wrap up? He's checking on it right now. Uh, okay, in the meantime, we can't move forward. I, I would like to hear uh, 
first of all, hypocrisy or not hypocrisy? Hands in the air if you think George Lucas is a hypocrite for his comments before. Uh, how many of you guys think he's not a hypocrite and he really is just concerned about preserving the original archives? The same person who wow. liked Batman Begins. Hey, now, don't Dark Knight. I want to point out. All right, wait, wait, what do you got to answer, Greg? strong. Okay. I see. I don't think he's contradicting himself. Not, I, I, yeah. He's still I, a douchebag. No, well, not. Here, come, come over to the mic if you got a question. We got, we got somebody from. We got like five more minutes. Yeah. yeah, we got. Not some other studio changing someone who's died what, but, but and that's destroying a, their negatives. Okay, Wait, can that, we do that? Can that, we get an injunction and just change Star Wars back? Because <laughs> if we can do that, I want. But that. he created Star Wars. He can do whatever he wants. But it. but it's that's his. just it. He happens to be in that that fabulously convenient role of somebody who created something and happens to own it. And that's what these rights are protecting. No, 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 no. The, uh, the whole point that he was upset, he was upset that copyright holders could deface the works of the people who created it and, and upset their original vision. So, like, because, and, But he kept going back because the original negatives may be gone and then we lose that original. He's not, he's not saying you can never remix. He's not saying you can never alter whether you're the original creator or not. What he's saying is because of copyright protection, the folks who own the originals may not protect the negatives, colorize and change, and we lose the, uh, the history. We lose the heritage. I think he's absolutely right. We need to protect the negatives. What is funny and ironic, what we're all reacting to, is the fact that he lays out his premises based on things that he has done every step of the way. Yes. Yes. Which just shows that he's been working at this all along. <laughs> all right, we got, uh, we got one it's like email. It's like his own mind comp. <clears throat> <laughs> Godwin's law. <laughs> Uh, okay, we, uh, you want to do feedback? Uh, yeah, we got like three minutes. All right, good. This will be good. All right, we, we only had one email this week on feedback here. Here's what I want you to do. Um, this person... <laughs> this person uh, wrote his email in such a robotic way that I actually want Justin Robert Young to read this email as a robot. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Right, right, right there. There you go. This is from Calvin, by the way. Gentlemen of frame rate, your show is adequate and within tolerance. I remain above neutral to its continuation. When do you look for when a movie or TV series is being remade? Do you want to update the technology and effects of the original while sticking close to the same story as they do with War of the Worlds, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Departed, or Scarface? Or do you prefer a new direction, using elements of the original as a shell to tell a new story within the existing setting, as seen with Battlestar Galactica, Alice in Wonderland, Tin Man, or Planet of the Apes? I think I'm going to go through this whole email. This is so long. Uh, I hope you found the beginning of this email to be a refuge from the tiring acclaim each other missive has brought to you. <laughs> If my apathy has not been strong enough antidote to the litany of praises you ought to receive, I will be sure to start the next email with stern admon admonishment. <laughs> Signed, Dickbot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, no, I love reimaginings. Uh, so I, I'm on Team Battlestar Galactica style reboots. Big fan of DC. Yeah, Planet of the Apes, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Reboot. I enjoy all the different stuff. Reboot like crazy. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm part of me. This this follows along from the Lucas uh, situation. Like part of me likes a good reboot. I like to see uh, I like to see a change and and see the story told. I think the problem with Star Wars is that he just goes and picks at it. It's like picking at a scab. You know, he's just like, oh, I want to put Jabba in here. I want to make him say no. <laughs> Redo the whole damn thing. Let's do Star Wars A New Hope all over again. Fresh new actors. I'd love to see that. I'd love to see somebody have a chance at that. Well, and, and the part or, that kills or maybe, or maybe a Star Wars story that doesn't involve the Skywalkers, you know? Like, there's the gigantic universe that you can do a million and a half different things. Well, he is sort of doing that with the with the uh, anime and the, you know. The, and well, the Clone Wars, series. Clone Wars features Anakin, Yeah, I guess right? you're right, yeah. Wait, the redoing Back to the Future, yeah. People, yeah. people don't like that. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I say uh, to me, it's like 
Unless it, it like with, with this, the Star Wars thing, the problem is that I just can't go out and buy a Blu-ray copy of the original. Yes, you know, yeah. I think that that's my only issue in terms of that he can noodle as much as he wants with it. And in terms of like a Back to the Future remake or any remake, I say just go do it. Like it's not gonna, it's not gonna, you know, they're not gonna burn the old Back to the Futures in a bonfire. I, you know? I want to see different takes on stuff, and they're all not yeah. gonna be good. But that doesn't mean they're all gonna be bad either. Keep trying. They, yeah, we we gotta so allow people to try this stuff. That's why I think copyright law uh, should be changed to limit the term. To you know, some shorter amount than ninety years plus. I mean, that's just that's just ridiculous. Yeah. No, we talked about that at at length last last week um, and every week. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, I guess that's it. If you guys have any comments, hit us up at frameratereshow at gmail dot com. That's frameratereshow at gmail dot com. Of course, we record live every Tuesday. We love to see guys in the chat room over at live twit tv. And I think that's it uh, for this episode of Frame Rate. Thank you to Veronica Belmont, to Justin Robert Young. To Tom Merritt for being here. Yeah, to well, and to Mark for helping us with the technical stuff. To Patrick Delahanty and Zach uh, for for volunteering Woo! to help set up the live view. To Derek Colanduno for putting together the whole skeptic track, and to every single one of you for being here. Yeah, we love you all. Copying is not theft. Stealing a thing leaves one less left. Copying it makes one thing more. That's what copying's for. Copying is not theft. If I copy yours, you have it too. One for me and one for you. That's what copies can do. If I steal your bicycle, you have to take the bus. But if I just copy it, there's one for each of us. Making more of a thing. That is what we call copying. Sharing ideas with everyone. That's why copying is fun.